The summer of 2023 is well underway, and with so many people traveling, airlines usually add more services during this busy period. Today's journey is one of those new services, taking us from Chicago to Calgary, Canada, on board American Airlines' 737-800. It's my first time flying American internationally since the pandemic, so let's see what the experience is like on this three-hour flight out west. Good morning everyone from the check-in hall here in O'Hare Terminal 3. Now, despite traveling to an international destination, the online check-in process was surprisingly very quick and easy. The only extra step that I noticed was to scan my passport, but even while checking in through the app, that process was really smooth. Now, when you do fly internationally with American Airlines, you can check all of the necessary requirements for your destination country right from your booking homepage. From here, you'll be able to view all requirements for both vaccinated and non-vaccinated passengers, even though vaccination status isn't really checked nowadays. The information provided outlines any pertinent travel restrictions and, most importantly, what documentation you'll need to enter that specific country. Of course, be sure to stay up to date with everything you need for travel because requirements can change all of a sudden. Since I'm traveling to Canada on an American passport, no visa is required. It's also worth noting that Americans visiting Canada can do so up until the date that their passport expires. Certain countries require you to have at least six months of passport validity when you visit, however, that doesn't apply to Americans traveling to Canada. When you do arrive in Canada, of course, you'll have to go through customs. Thankfully, filling out the Arrive Can declaration in advance gives you an expedited process. Passengers who choose to complete the Arrive Can must complete this declaration less than 72 hours before arrival in Canada. Again, it's not required, but recommended. My family and I recently enrolled in TSA PreCheck, and this was the first time in years that I was able to use the PreCheck lane. After clearing the checkpoint in 5 minutes, the next item on the agenda was to get some breakfast, since we still have 2 hours before the flight anyway. And no, this is not sponsored by Dunkin Donuts. This morning, we're on board flight 1102 to Calgary. This route is only served by American Airlines during the summer season, and today is its second day of operation having been resumed the day before. We're also departing out of gate K-13 today, which is perfect because my last international trip with American Airlines also began from this gate. Our 737 today was built back in 2000. All 737s built before 2005 were produced with cockpit eyebrow windows. These were intended to help the flight crew with navigation and visibility. Such a design was first implemented on the Boeing 707 and later seen on other aircraft like the 727, MD-80, and DC-9. But with advancements in technology, there's really no need for eyebrow windows anymore. Many airlines, like American, have plugged these windows on their 737s, but you can still see them if you look closely. Boarding started on time and was done in groups as usual. However, because it's an international flight, each passenger had to showcase their passport and also do a quick biometric facial recognition scan. The entire process was very quick and nothing to stress about. American's Boeing 737-800 is fitted with 160 seats, 16 in business class and 144 in main cabin, with 24 of those being main cabin extra seats. Now, you might have noticed that I said business class instead of first class, and that's because on international flights, these domestic first class seats are indeed sold as business class. There was a surprisingly light load on today's flight. Despite the back of the plane being mostly full, Many rows towards the middle and front were empty. 
As such, a few passengers were moved up into empty seats to keep the aircraft balanced. My seat today is 21A. Most of American's narrowbody fleet features the new Kodiak seats, which, despite being thinner than the older seats, are still not bad in terms of comfort. They also come with adjustable headrests, which are pretty solid and get the job done. The top of the seat back contains the literature pocket with a safety card and air sickness bag. Next is the personal device holder, which is ideally where you can place your device to stream entertainment from. Depending on what side of the plane you're on, there's a USB port on either the left or right. Next is a tray table, which, you know, I mean, it's a tray table, you can extend it, pretty basic stuff. And then all the way at the bottom is a netted seat pocket for your personal belongings. The legroom, despite being 30 inches, felt perfectly fine, but if you happen to be on a full flight and have a bag in front, it will start to feel tight. You'll also find universal power outlets at the bottom of each seat, and I was glad to see that instead of there being two outlets for every three seats like I'm used to seeing, every seat gets their own outlet. Finally, above the seat are the air vents, call buttons, and reading lights. For safety reasons, e-cigarettes and vape devices may not be plugged into any power source while on board the airplane. The safety card in your seat pocket explains the safety features of this airplane, including the location and operation of exits in addition to American Airlines, two other carriers also operate nonstop between Chicago and Calgary. WestJet, Calgary's hometown airline, recently resumed its seasonal service in May 2023, leaving United as the only carrier offering year-round service between these two cities.
once airborne, I decided to put the personal device holder to the test and placed my 10 inch iPad in the clamps. To my surprise, it fit without any issue. However, from what I could tell, the device holder only stretches out this much, so if you have any larger devices, you might have to use the tray table. A nice thing about the device holder is that when the seat in front of you reclines, as shown here, the viewing angle doesn't get very distorted, so you can still watch without issue. The only real concern is that the device is thrust much closer to your face. Now what do you think of personal device entertainment? Let me know since American is the only one of the three legacy US airlines ditching narrow body seat back screens in favor of personal device entertainment. Compare this to Delta and now United who both opted for more seat back screens with personal device entertainment also being an option offered on board. Whatever the case may be, personal device entertainment is still easy to use. Internet access is still pricey, especially for a three hour flight, but to my surprise, certain flights offer limited internet access, including this one, which we'll look at later. Otherwise, there's some random offers and subscriptions that I doubt anyone pays attention to. The entertainment selection, as I've always covered, is plentiful with lots of good options. Depending on the coverage, live TV is offered, but otherwise you have tons of movies and shows to choose from. Other features of the personal entertainment include checking destination weather and browsing various resources on the American website. The limited free internet actually does work. You get 20 minutes of access, but first, you have to watch a 15 second sponsored video from Indiana University. I tried my best not to cringe at the fact that they chose Indiana and not the University of Illinois, but this was a nice feature. I was able to see our flight's progress on Flight Radar 24 and also see what planes were flying nearby, like this American 777 to Phoenix. Social media apps like Instagram did work, however, some parts took some time to load. Now, I couldn't help but notice that even though there's a curtain separating business class from main cabin, the crew stuffed it in the overhead bin and never used it during the flight. Why exactly? I, I don't really know. Snack service on this 3 hour flight was, believe it or not, even more restricted than a regular domestic flight. Biscoff cookies were the only option today instead of pretzels also being an option, and then to drink I had coke. Now, I didn't expect anything more from American on this flight, so I can't say I was disappointed, but compared to other parts of the world, this catering is a joke. What's also a joke is the fact that the entire plane was missing the information pamphlet. You know, this, this thing right here, yeah, it just wasn't at any of the seats, and the crew even made note of this during the drink service. But you want to see an even bigger joke? The bathroom. These new bathrooms on the American 737s are tiny, and you can maybe move around a little bit, but only in one place. And the sink? This isn't even a sink, this is the little bowl in the dentist's office they make you spit into. Now, my hand is like a normal sized hand, however you want to define that, and that's how it compares to the width of the sink. It's just so funny that I don't know who thought this was a good idea. If anyone cares, there's a coat hook at least, but otherwise, that's the bathroom. I will say that when you're washing your hands, it should come as no surprise that it's really easy to make a mess because the sink is literally two inches deep, so just hope that your bathroom has enough paper towels because you're gonna need paper towels. As I walk back to my seat, you can see how full the back of the plane is. You can also see that a few passengers are using the personal device entertainment, which is good, but I'm sure that if there were seat back screens, more people would be using those. The rest of the flight was pretty chill. I watched a movie and before long, the seatbelt sign came back on to signal our descent into Calgary. Now, I've been to Canada before, Toronto and Vancouver, but this is the first time I've ever flown into the country. Our approach into Calgary had us approaching from the southeast before turning base and coming right past the city for a landing on runway 35 left.
felt fascinating. Upon landing, my first impressions of Calgary were that, wow, this is quite a beautiful city that I couldn't wait to explore, along with Banff National Park, where I would spend the majority of this trip. So American Airlines, honestly, I don't mind the Kodiak cabin except maybe the bathroom. Otherwise, the seats are fine and the crew was very helpful today. Service-wise, it's American Airlines on a short-haul flight, so you can't really expect much, and this is true even for the competition. On this same route, I doubt WestJet and United are providing better food services, but in terms of entertainment, United will definitely have the upper hand soon once more mainline jets get retrofitted with the next cabin. But at the end of the day, it was a good flight, we arrived early, and if the price is right, you'll definitely see me back on American some other day. So as if the humor couldn't get any better, the ramp marshaller somehow parked us too far ahead in the wrong spot. As such, the captain made an announcement for everyone to get back in their seats as we would get pushed back about 10 feet or so. Like um, where I grew up, yeah, where I grew up in New Jersey, my are like, kind of like, skittish, like, yeah. Like, they'll like go through people's trash, walk around, the international arrival process in Calgary was pretty simple. We arrived at the furthest possible gate in Concourse E, so the walk to immigration was about 5 or so minutes. Because I had filled out the Arrive Can declaration beforehand, I got to use the express lane, and all I needed to do was confirm my declaration on some kiosks, print the declaration out, and then get into another line to get the declaration printout checked by some officers. All in all, the customs process was very simple and took around 10 minutes. But here we are, welcome to Canada. Thanks so much for joining me today and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here for more exciting videos coming this summer. With that being said, take care everyone and see you next time.